Good morning, everyone. This is Minister Matt Johnson. Glad you can join me for Sunday Morning Glory. We're still continuing soul wholeness. Wholeness in your mind, your will, and your emotions. Just putting on my watch. We'll get started in a moment. Give me one minute. Let me get the video shared, and then we're going to get this going and bless y'all this morning. Usually the videos are about an hour, but we're going to make it about 30 minutes this morning. So we, we're not going to keep you all too long. I made it a point to start shortening. What's going on, uh, man of God? How you doing? I made it a point to start shortening the videos, um, you know, especially because sometimes I know even with me, man, I want to always go, go to full length of the video. So I just try to be mindful of people's time, even with the information that I um, have to give. So just give me give me about 45 more seconds. Let me share this video to some pages. And if you're watching, share the video to your page because I say the same thing every week. Even if you can't use information, somebody else can. So just share it to your page. Your social media page, you can share it to group pages, um, just so people can be blessed by it. <clears throat> Give me one moment, and then we're going to get this started. We're still talking about soul wholeness. You know, we've dealt with a variety of topics these last two months, um, and people have been, you know, sending praise reports in, being blessed by it. Um... Because, you know, like, like I tell people, the church has become so one-dimensional on preaching. The church only preach on sin. A lot of churches don't be helping other folks. Like, that's dealing with actual weight. Hebrews 12, 1 talks about weight and sin. So if it was always sin, then the scripture wouldn't have mentioned weight. And what have we called weight? Weight is heavy soul baggage. That's what weight is. So if, if, if so, the enemy, that's what he wants. He wants us to just harp on sin, 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 repent, repent, repent. You know what I'm saying? But And then while you got 80% of the church talking about that, the enemy coming in, killing off 80% of the body, um, you know, with low self-esteem, with trauma, with pain, undealt with issues, with grief, with sorrow, low self-esteem, uh, unhealthy codependency. The enemy is killing the body off with a lot of stuff, especially that low self-esteem. Especially because you, you go to any average church and you're going to hear about a million sermons on pride. But how many people talking about low self-esteem? Not knowing that that's a weight in itself. Uh, and actually a weight that's just as deadly. But most people just look at pride, pride, pride. But when you And look at it like this. My pastor says some people got uh, the devil can take over and out, which means they can think so highly of themselves that they, you know, just go off the deep end. And then some folks, the devil take down and out, which means he gets them to think so low about themselves uh, that uh, they don't walk in their calling, walk in their purpose. And I always tell people, the devil is not really after your assignment. He's not after, um, he's not after your assignment. He's not trying to take your assignment or your purpose. He wants to distort your uh, thoughts about how God looks at you. He wants to distort your esteem and your value because if he can get you to not think much of yourself or, you know, to, you know, to kind of just look at yourself like junk, like you're nothing, then he already got your purpose. You're going to kill your own purpose with that. So that's why I said the enemy not after your purpose, your, your assignment. He after affecting your esteem and how you look at yourself and how you perceive that God looks at you. And if he can pervert that, then trust and believe uh, you're going to, like I said, you're going to kill your own esteem. And yes, the scripture says lay aside every weight, but I like the amplified version. We'll read that in a moment, but you know, I mentioned it, you know, multiple times throughout the, uh, broadcast, but the amplified version says stripping off every unnecessary weight and the sin, uh, which so cleverly entangles us sometimes, you know, and I used to always, you know, preach many sermons, heard many sermons from the lay aside every weight. But when you get the amplified, it just did something to me by, um, you know, when it spoke of stripping off because some stuff, just because you decide to lay it down, 
don't mean it's going nowhere. Everything ain't going going nowhere so easy just because you you make a choice. So that's why I like the Amplified version that says stripping off because it requires some fortitude, some strength, uh, some aggression, and things like that. So so let's get into it. So like I said, we've been talking about soul holding is breaking free from the weight of our mind, will, and emotions, and we've titled um, weight heavy soul baggage because that's what it is. Uh, and the topic for today uh, is the weight of our memory. And, you know, some of the weights we've dealt with in the last two months, uh, like I said, it was low self-esteem, unhealthy codependency, existential debt. Uh, we've dealt with uh, guilt. We, we've dealt with um, jealousy. We've dealt with envy. Um, we've dealt with a, a good host of things, you know, because the enemy comes from different angles because he knows it requires different uh, tactics uh, to affect different people and like I said it's not always the devil uh, a lot of stuff that's going on in our life it's not we're not stagnant a lot of times just because of sin our relationships is not messed up uh, our, our we can't make we're, we're not hindered from making progress in life we're not being fruitful it's not always because of sin stop thinking it's because of sin that's why the scripture Hebrews uh, 12 1 says therefore and amplified Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who by faith testified to the truth of God's absolute faithfulness, stripping off every unnecessary weight and the sin uh, which so easily and cleverly entangles us, let us run with endurance and active persistence the race that is set before us. Understand, sometimes it's just simple weight, the reason why you can't keep a healthy relationship, the reason why you can't. Uh, you know, move forward in life. The reason why you're barren, uh, sometimes it's just wait. Stop letting folks tell you that it's sin. Stop letting folks keep you on all talking about. You need to get down on that altar and stay on that altar and repent, repent, repent. It ain't about sin because if it was only about sin, then Hebrews 12:1 wouldn't have mentioned something about weight. It said, lay aside every weight and the sin. So that means it's another part to this. And understand, Jesus, when he did his work on Calvary, it wasn't just for no sin. It was for anything that troubles his people, anything that tries to keep his people stagnant and bound, unfruitful, barren. He died for all of that stuff. So well, he didn't just die for your sin. He just he died also for them weights that you continue to carry, that grief, that trauma, that undealt with or unacknowledged pain. Uh, you know, them folks that have wounded you that you still ain't forgiven. He died for all that stuff. You don't need to be carrying that weight. Uh, because, you know, I was, weight really, you know, even if you look at it in a natural sense, when it, good morning, elder. Hey, mom. When you look at it in the natural sense, you know, before weights can help you, weights break your body down. Weights hurt, uh, you know, and things like that. But it's all about how you approach those weights as well. Uh, you know, because just like if you if you use a bad form or if you're not you're not lifting properly, doing the wrong things, you can jack yourself up and no matter how much weight you're lifting, it's not going to bring any benefit. So if you're not acknowledging that this weight uh, exists in your soul, acknowledging that you're carrying all of this, uh, then that stuff is going to cripple you. It doesn't have the potential to help you uh, because you're not acknowledging that it's there and you're not being aware of the uh, destructive tendencies that those weights can bring uh so just like you have to use proper form with weight proper form as far as these weights are concerned your heavy soul baggage mean first let's acknowledge that you got some stuff going on and then acknowledge what that stuff is that's the only way you can begin to formulate a strategy is when you begin to acknowledge that this stuff exists because like they tell you in AA meetings, uh, you know, drug rehabilitation programs, you have to admit that there's a problem and then you have to identify the problem. You know, people have always said, just acknowledge there's a problem. No, that's not, it's many more steps after that. Yes, you need to acknowledge that there's a problem, but what is this problem? Uh, because if it's a, you know, we'll just use something simple for the sake of time. If it's an apple, why would you use a strategy to defeat an orange? You see what I'm saying? You know, that's what I mean. So you have to identify what that problem is. So like I said, for the last two months, we've been dealing with the uh, with weight, or as I call it, heavy soul baggage. Some may ask, what is it? Once again, it's unacknowledged and undealt with grief, pain, trauma, habits, addictions, could be unforgiveness, low self-esteem, unhealthy codependency, existential debt, guilt, jealousy, envy, anger, rage, and the list goes on. This is stuff that people think time don't solve anything. So, you know, that's a... Uh, 
statement that I like to get out of people's vocabulary. Uh, time heals all wounds. Time solves all things. No, it doesn't. You can t A hundred years can go by if you ain't acknowledged or dealt with this stuff that's going on in your mind, your will, and your emotions. It's still going to be there at the end of time, and it's d doing nothing but jacking you up in the process. Uh, so understand, time, unless you deal with it and acknowledge it, I don't care how much time go by. The stuff will still be there. You have to uh, actively deal with this. Confront this stuff. Don't act like it don't exist. Get out of denial. That's also what's killing people. And I'm blessed and highly favored. Yeah, but you're on the verge of losing your mind because you still won't deal with that pain of what happened to you when you was five years old. Or, you know what I'm saying? It's like I tell people, don't, don't over-spiritualize this thing. Because, again, people looking at it, looking at what's going on in their life and they just think it's sin. God is telling you, no, you, you need to evaluate your mind, evaluate your will, evaluate your emotions. Let me help you do that uh, so that we can get to the root of what's going on. My favorite statement, one of them I should say is, stop trying to treat the symptoms and cure the condition. Point blank. Stop trying to feel better and let God go ahead and just totally solve this stuff once and for all. John 10, John 10, 10 tells us, the enemy, the devil, comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's the only part I want to take. We often make this easy for him to do so by refusing to let go of, holding on to, being ignorant to, following illusions, putting up fronts, laziness, or indifferent attitudes. We make the, the plans and the plots, the schemes, the tricks of the enemy, again, so easy. We make it easy for him to destroy us, to, steal, to first steal from us, kill kill us and to destroy us all together. We do so again by refusing to let go of stuff, holding on to stuff, being ignorant to stuff, following illusions and not what the real deal is, putting up front or putting on airs as they say, or laziness or indifferent attitudes. That's how we're en enabling the enemy to do continually destroy us in our uh, mind, our will and our emotions. But it's time. Guess, guess who can be the only person to get you out of what you're going through? You and God. And actually, God's hands is tied because if you don't ever make that decision to want to get out of what you're going through, if you don't ever make that decision and put forth the effort within yourself, uh, it don't matter what it, it don't matter. God already wrote the story. It's already done. But but you have the power to get there or not. You know, what I'm saying based on our decisions and choices, uh, just like it don't matter how much folks encourage you, how much folks speak into your life. If you never get it in your mind, get in your heart. And put forth the effort and the fortitude that it takes to come out of whatever is trying to keep you stagnant and unfruitful. You will never get out of it. That's why I tell people that that internal motivation, uh, external comes, you know, folks speak into your life and give you a word and encourage you. Uh, that has its, its limits. Because, again, there's some folks that have been getting encouragement for 100 years and they still ain't got no better. They've been getting their life spoken to for a hundred years and nothing still has changed because they ain't made the choice to change. And do other folks a favor. If you know you don't want to, you if you know you like your issues, like what you're going through, and believe it or not, that's a that's a disorder. Some people like exactly what they're going through and they really don't want to be free or delivered. Uh, many therapists, counselors, and psychologists will tell you that. So if you're one of those people, do other folks a favor, leave them alone. Stop stop dumping on folks and you know you don't want a solution to your problem. That's one of the things we've been saying. Um, contrary to what people have said, though, or mentioned to you, freedom, healing, wholeness is your choice. It's a cho uh, It's not all on God, meaning he doesn't force us to not let the enemy steal, kill, and destroy us. It's our choice. He, you know, he he doesn't say, I'm going to make you not let the enemy steal, kill, and destroy you. No. You know, we have to take the remedies, the strategies that he offered to stop the enemy from letting, uh, to stop the enemy from uh, steal, stealing from us, killing us, and destroying us. It's not all on God. It's our choice. Therefore, we must play a part in our defense against his schemes, his plans, and even a bigger part in our breakthroughs, our freedom, and our miracles. Let me repeat that one more time. Therefore, we must play a part in our defense against the devil's schemes and his plans, and an even bigger part in our breakthroughs, freedoms, and miracles. That's why the scripture tells us in 1 Peter, you got to submit yourself to God, resist the devil, then he going to flee. We're trying to resist the devil, and we ain't submitted our life over to God. 
It's almost like we won't, we thank God, we thank God for sending Jesus to be our savior down on the cross, all that stuff. But we don't want Jesus to govern our life. We don't want him to be ruler over our life. You know, we want to do a lot of times we want to do what we want to do. And then we get ourselves into some snags and some situations. We want to be able to call, call out to Jesus and have him deliver us. That's not, God doesn't allow that. He, you know, he's not playing those type of games anymore. So a lot of stuff, if you purposely getting yourself into it, thinking uh, the, all the grace and mercy of God is going to get me out. Uh, that's a lie. Uh, God will allow you to self-destruct if you persist on not taking his strategies and not using his word as a preventative measure. It's not his will that we keep getting wrapped up into stuff. Galatians 5.1 says, stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and be not again entangled with the yoke of bondage. When you persist on getting re-entangled with something that he didn't already freed you from, he's going to let you stay in that thing for a while. And sometimes, and you better hope, uh, once you get back into that thing, it don't kill you. Because sometimes when you go back into something, after previously being delivered from it, some people don't make it back out. That's why you cannot play a gambling match. If you've been free from some, stay free from that thing. Stop going. If you've been free from grief, some pain, some trauma, why would you go back and still connect with the same people uh, to continue to go to the same places that brought about that stuff from the very beginning? Uh, you have to use some wisdom in some things now. Uh, because guess what? The enemy is shrewd. He wants to get you tangled and wrapped back up. Because once he do that, once you go back into something after uh, being in it the first time you came out, now you're going back, that thing is going to be stronger. It's going to have a stronger grip on you, and it may not let you go. And the reason why you can't continue to ignore God's word uh, and to do what you want to do and expect him to get you out all the time, uh, number one, it's called a reprobated mind. That's what the book of Romans call it, where, you know, God will give you over to yourself. He'll let you begin to eat the fruit of your own ways. Good morning, sis. So you can't just take his word, you know, and use it when it's convenient and saying, OK, if I get myself wrapped up into this or I, I, I get I put these weights on myself, because a lot of times we put the weights on ourselves, uh, you know, by not making the right decisions and choices, connecting with folks we shouldn't. Uh, you know, we'll say, oh, God will go ahead and deliver me. Now he's going to teach you a lesson too. So if he's, especially if he's already got you out of something, that's just like somebody, you going to bail, put $10,000 up to get somebody out of jail right now, right? By eight o'clock, they back in jail. Now, how would that make you feel? That would make you mad. That would anger you because it will feel all of your efforts have been in vain. It's the same way God looks at us. It's his will, not that we should perish, that we should come into repentance, that we should live freely and have the abundant life. That's the other part of John 10.10. 10. The thief, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I am come that they may have life, that they may have it more abundantly. What is that abundant life? Being healed and whole in your mind, your will, and your emotions. And your and your your physical body, your heart, every aspect of you, walking in healing and wholeness on every level. That's what that abundant life is. Abundant life ain't about no houses and cars and all that type of stuff. Those are byproducts. But you want to first be healthy in your mind, your will, and your emotions, your physical body, uh, because or else money and cars and fame and all that stuff don't do you no good. Um, alrighty, so. We're going to go ahead and speed this up because I only want to deal with, uh, like I said, I want to make this video short. I don't want it to be an hour. <laughs> uh, let's see. If you make a choice to give place to the devil, to continue leaving parts of you uncovered and allowing him to creep in, refusing to acknowledge and deal with your heavy soul baggage, then guess what? God will allow you to stay right there. Choose ye this day exactly what you want. And you have to stand on that. I'm going to repeat that one more time. If you make a choice to give place to the devil, to continue leaving parts of you uncovered and allowing him to creep in, refusing to acknowledge and deal with your heavy soul baggage, those weights, then guess what? God will allow you to stay right there. That's why it says, choose ye this day who you're going to serve. You know, and in this aspect, I just took that phrase, choose ye this day exactly what you want. Do you want to be free? Do you want to be healed? Do you want to be whole? If so, make that conscious choice and stand on that. Some of the review questions. We've been asking certain questions that will allow us to probe, evaluate, and examine our current status of our own soul. Because we can only evaluate our own soul. 
us and God. We can't do that for nobody else, and we don't need to be trying to do that in nobody else. That's called the blind leading the blind. You're trying to help other folks with their issues, and you ain't got yourself together yet. That's for another lesson, though. Specific questions that will cause us to ponder upon, to brainstorm, to reflect, to make connections, and many times to bring us to a point of awareness. Without proper questions causing our mind to begin to work, we will often give ourselves a pass, deceiving ourselves into thinking that all is well, when in fact we are carrying weight. Uh, let me see. Yet yeah, when we let me see. Yet yeah, when we are carrying weight, we are giving permission to those unacknowledged and undealt with issues to sift us as weak. And even as the scripture, when Jesus was telling Peter, "I pray that your faith don't fail you," because the devil is trying to sift you as weak. The enemy trying to sift you as wheat. What does sifting as wheat mean? In that passage, it means to destroy incrementally, little by little, hoping things go unnoticed. And then when you finally notice it, it'll be too big for you to deal with. That's not the will of God. He wants you to have discerning of spirits and be able to see some things afar off. He don't want you to wait till the enemy get up on your face and then try to deal with the enemy. He wants to show you the enemy afar off so either he can give you the strategy to defeat the enemy or to keep the enemy at bay. That's the will of God right there for you. But we have to pay attention with what God is showing us. Again, don't wait till the enemy get up here and then start trying to pray and, and get all, Lord, help me and I need to know what to do. No, you should have been listening. You should have been keeping yourself in position where you could see the enemy way over there before he got that close up on you, okay? Uh, so, to uh, sift this week means to destroy us incrementally, meaning to destroy us little by little beyond the subconscious level until the manifestation of that destruction grows to an unbearable magnitude. The point is, acknowledge and deal with things before they've had a chance to marinate, settle in, and solidify themselves as part of you. I'm going to repeat that one more time. The point is, acknowledge and deal with things before they've had a chance to marinate, to settle in and solidify themselves as part of you. And now, uh, the questions that I want you to begin to ask yourself, begin to evaluate yourself in your times of meditation, your times of uh, quietness, you know, being in, in total solitude sometimes. That's a lot of times the only time we can really have adequate time to think and begin to evaluate ourselves. And you need to find out what your current soul status is. Stop talking that blessed and highly favored stuff. Stop talking that all is well stuff when you know you're dealing with some issues. Acknowledge what the, that you're dealing with issues and find out what exactly you are dealing with. That's the only way you can break free. You can't shout over this stuff. You can't speak in tongues over this stuff. You can't fast over this stuff. You can't read the Bible over this stuff. You got to deal with this stuff because guess what? All of those things become rituals if you won't be honest about what's really going on with you. All right? So the first thing you need to ask yourself is, am I carrying weight? Next, what weight am I carrying? Next, how is this weight evident in my life? Meaning, what visible behaviors, attitudes, and results of this weight have you taken notice of? Or what others may have brought to your attention? Then you want to ask yourself, how long have I carried this weight? Then you ask yourself, exactly, why am I continuing to choose to carry this weight? Yes, it's a choice. Slash, what's stopping me from choosing to move towards the path of healing and wholeness, rather choosing to stay weighed down? You have to ask yourself that. And this is not stuff you ask yourself one time and keep it moving. This is stuff because we, we don't always be honest with ourselves on the uh, first go around. It may, take, it may take you a while to begin to dig through some layers and to, uh, to get under some of that glunk and grit and dirt that you have uh, built up inside. It's like you got this pain, this happened to you, then you let time go by and you ain't deal with it. So now all this, this, this crust and this 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 uh, pus and everything is on top of that. Then you get another issue and then that get on top of that. Then you get another issue. That's why I said time don't heal nothing. Time don't solve nothing. You got to deal with this stuff, y'all. The next question you need to ask yourself is, do I really want to be healed and whole? You got to ask yourself that. It sounds crazy, but it's a disorder. Some folks fall in love with their issues. They fall in love with their emotional trauma. They fall in love with uh, the, that, that grief and that sorrow, those undealt with and unacknowledged issues. Some people fall in love with that, and they don't want to be free. They don't want to be healed or whole. Why? Because they, they fall in love, not just with the issue, but with the attention it brings. Some folks always want to have a side story to say. 
because they want to always corner somebody up and dump on them and then, can you pray for me? Can you touch and agree with me? No, you touch and agree with yourself. You deal with your own issues. Again, we dealt with that. That was another way that I talked about being a human garbage can. Stop being a human garbage can for folks, letting folks dump their issues on you. No, we have to make, we want to support people and be there for people, but stop letting them utilize you as a human garbage can. We need to make people uh, responsible uh, for their own issues. You're not going to dump on me and then you're going to go ahead and move on with your life. You know, that's why some calls you don't need to take because you already know it's going to be somebody trying to dump on you. That's not what the scripture talks about when it talks about bearing one another's burdens. No, that when it talks about bearing one another's burdens, that simply is talking about, yes, show concern, show compassion for your brothers and sisters. It don't mean let me let me dump on you and you're supposed to carry this. No, you need to be responsible for your own issues because you have those weights because of uh, what went on in your life. It, you know, it, it wasn't because of me, so I can't let you dump on me because I may be dealing with my own stuff as well. So you have to be careful with that. Uh, again. Do you really want to be healed and whole? Be honest with yourself. If you like being weighed down uh, in pain because of the attention it brings, then say that. If you're tired of allowing this weight to stagnate you, uh, to make you barren, to destroy you, uh, if you're tired of allowing this weight to keep you from getting what God has for you, then you need to say that. And you need to not only say that, but do all that is necessary to break free. The reason why I'm trying to help folks, I don't like preaching hyped up sermons. You know, and I always laugh at this. I can preach with the best of them. Everybody can get that, that fluff, those fluff message. God getting ready to bless you. No, man, forget that. God wants you to deal with these issues of your soul. Because the one problem we're dealing with is we got too many preachers only harping on sin. Is that the only thing Jesus went to Calvary for? Just to die for our sins? He didn't die for these weights that Hebrews 12 1 talks about, stripping off every unnecessary weight. Did he not? Did he not uh, take that to Calvary? So why we don't deal with that? We letting folks tell us, oh, you, you, you unfruitful, you barren in life, your relationships ain't working, you can't uh keep a steady job, you this is happening because of sin. You need to repent this day. Stop all of that. Hebrews 12 1 tells us there's another side to it. Lay aside. That's the King James Version, but I don't like that version anymore. I like the Amplified Version. It says stripping off every unnecessary weight and the sin. Reason why I like, I like that version, because it gives you a different perspective from this angle. It's going to require some very good effort from you, some fortitude, some, some willpower uh, to move past some of these issues. Um, and again, you can't shout over this stuff. So, so you go into church in vain if you're not really opening yourself up. If you have not acknowledged what you dealing that you're dealing with something. If you have not acknowledged what it is you're dealing with, you not ask yourself these questions that I just told you to ask. Why are you still way down? If you're not opening yourselves up, I don't care how much shouting, how much fasting, how much reading the Bible, how many sermons, how many uh, revivals you attend, how many prophets speak into your life. It's all null and void. None of that is going to come to pass because you're not opening yourself up and letting that word and letting all that stuff hit where it needs to really hit. OK, so y'all going to understand these days that it ain't all about sin. Sometimes you need to look at your soul status, what's going on in your mind. What's going on in your will and your emotion? You know, one scripture that people have taken only in a in context of something uh, that has to do with sin or spirit. And we know your spirit and your soul are two, are two different things. You know that scripture. What does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? We've heard a million sermons on that. You know, don't be trying to get all this stuff in life and, and be sinning to get it and be, uh, uh, you know, doing things you shouldn't be doing because God ain't pleased with that. But now we know we're talking, we've been talking about soul wholeness, being whole in your mind, will, and your emotions. So if we know the soul is your mind, will, and your emotions, we have to open that scripture up. It's not adding to the scripture. We need to, we need to get out of, you know, <laughs> thinking that we have to look at a scripture a certain way because that's what granddaddy said. That's what bishop said, elder said back in the day. What is God saying to you through that scripture? So now we know what the soul is. Look at it like this. What does it profit a man to gain the world? And be insane to lose his mind. What does it profit a person to gain the world and have their emotions scattered everywhere? Being an emotional wreck. What does it profit? What does it profit to gain the world and a man's will is seared and, and disconnected from God's will? It's not, again, it's not always a 
Same thing. So we have to look at that scripture from that. So I will hope that you will start preaching that from a different angle. And if you are that preacher, I don't know who you are, or if you, you or if you're a person that has an influence over people, stop telling people it's always sin. Uh, and if there's something that you can't help people deal with, then try to find somebody who can. Um, but I always say too, you know, sweep around your own front door. So you, before you start trying to help other folks deal with some issues, you need to make sure your soul status is together. Uh, because guess what? You can be anointed and crazy. Uh, you can be prophesying and, and God is working miracles through you, but you're still on the verge of a nervous breakdown because of all that pressure. That's what being sifted as wheat means. You've been destroyed incrementally, little by little, and now it's too big for you to handle. So you have to be careful with that. Uh, let's see. We've all heard the saying because the title of this, uh, this particular weight of this message is the weight of our memory. We've all heard or heard that saying, or we even said it, that I'll forgive, but I'll never forget. Obviously, it's not in human nature to forget what has strongly impacted us or left an imprint on us, whether good or bad. Hey, Tanisha. However, majority of the time when people say that statement, I'll forgive, but I'll never forget. Uh, whether they acknowledge it or not, it's spoken with hurt. It's spoken with anger. It's spoken with apprehension. And uh, what that statement is giving off or really saying is, I'm going to say I forgave you, but every time I see you, what you did to me will still come back to the forefront of my thoughts and I'm going to treat you accordingly. That's what that statement, I'll forgive, but I'll never forget, really is saying. Um, we've all at one point or at another said and really believed uh, that we forgave someone, yet we cringe whenever we heard their name mentioned. We hid or became angry uh, when we saw their face. This may currently be going on with some of us right now. Uh, uh, out of sight forgiveness, hear this, out of sight forgiveness isn't real forgiveness. Uh, some people are deceived into thinking, no, some people are deceived into believing that they have really forgiven someone. And they may even say, I don't even think about such and such. You know, people, you heard people say that and you may have said that. We all have probably said that before. Which may be the cause due to the out of sight, out of mind concept. Because sometimes when you something is not in your sight, if it's not in your direct view, you know, sometimes it does briefly leave your mind and you probably don't particularly think about it until that thing pops up. But like I said, out of sight forgiveness isn't real forgiveness. However, when that person is in sight or when they are the topic of conversation around you, how do you allow your memory to affect you? How does that memory affect and influence your uh, your behavior and your attitude? When, when something comes to mind, like I said, if somebody that has negatively impacted you or affected you, if somebody talking about that person around you, bring up their name. How You know, when that memory comes to mind, begin to monitor yourself. What's going on with you? You know, do you, like I said, do you start cringing? Do you start hiding? Or when that person walk in the atmosphere, do you try to duck and dodge and go hide? Or do you get angry? Do you get anxiety? What's going on with you? You have to make these connections about what the, what kind of, um, what kind of, uh, how can I put this? What kind of physical behaviors and things are happening when that memory comes to mind? Uh, how does that memory affect and influence your behavior and attitude? If your memory debilitates you, stagnates you, angers you, frustrates you, weigh you down, stop you from being you, or if you are having a good time, and now that peace has been taken because that person walked in the room. Guess what? You have not really forgiven that person no matter what you say. You will know when you're totally free, healed, and whole because then you dictate to your memory how to act. Not letting your memory dictate to you how you should behave or what your attitude should be. I'm going to say that one more time. You will know when you're totally free, healed, and whole. Uh, because then you dictate to your memory how to act and how your attitude should be when those uh, images come back to your head. You're not going to no longer let your memory dictate to you how you should behave or what your attitude should be. I want to draw out a portion of Isaiah 43, 18, which says, remember not the former things, neither consider the things of the old. You'll never reap the benefits of the present and future if you continually allow the path the past to dictate your behavior or if you allow the past to be your guide on your path. I know that was like a tongue twister. That was some wordplay. You will never reap the benefits of the present and future if you continuously allow the past to dictate your behavior or if you allow the past to be your guide on your path. 
it will guide you down the wrong path when you let your past drive you. You know, it will uh, drive you and guide you down the wrong path because now you're letting something tainted, painful and something behind you give you directions for something ahead of you. Why would you let something behind you give you directions for something ahead of you? Uh, sounds crazy, right? Yes, we all have probably done this at one point or another. And some of us are still in the midst of doing this and we need help, y'all. We need to be free in our soul. Is forgiveness a process? Yes. And to be totally free and allow your allow your memory of the pain and the trauma to not change your attitude or behavior does require some time. Once again, is forgiveness a process? Yes. And to be totally free and to allow your memory of the pain or trauma to not change your attitude or behavior does require some time. Yet at the same time, how much time is predicated upon you? You have to dictate to your pain. Listen to this. You have to dictate to your pain, your trauma, and your memory of what transpired that you want to take power back from it and not let it control you. You have to dictate. Don't let your pain, your trauma, or memory of what happened dictate to you how long this process should be or you'll be 100 years old uh, still talking about what happened to you when you was 26. All right. And yes, it does happen. I've encountered to encounter some old folks that still dealing that's still dealing with issues that probably should have been dealt with 60 years ago. Don't let that be you. James 1 5 amplified mentions if any of you lacks wisdom to guide him through a decision or circumstance, he is to ask of our benevolent God who gives to everyone generously and without rebuke or blame. And it will be given to him. Should we stay away from Steer clear of, not talk to or interact with people, places, and things which have severely impacted us and caused us pain? Yes, we should until we're in a good mental and spiritual space. Until you're in a good mental and spiritual space, you should stay away from everything and steer clear of everything and try not to and try to limit your interactions with that stuff that has caused the pain. Not doing so will delay full healing and wholeness. Not staying away from steering clear of, uh, continue to interact with uh, things that have severely impacted you and caused you pain and trauma. Not doing that stuff will delay full healing and wholeness. It will be like picking off a scab one day after it formed, meaning you have now prematurely exposed uh, that wound to further infection. Again, that's like picking off a scab. You pick off a scab a day after it formed. Now that thing is still uh, pink and, and red and, and you leave yourself susceptible to more infection before that thing had a chance to really heal. Uh, and now guess what? The scabbing process got to start all the way over. Why do that to yourself? That's torture. Again, remember that you must be an active participant in your freedom, your healing and your wholeness, which means in this case, you must consistently make wise decisions that will allow you to one day walk whole. If you know something, if you know you're not really over something, that thing is still when you when that memory come back to you, uh, you have not given forgiveness is full process. It's chance to work fully through you. Stop talking all this religious rigmarole. I forgive him because I'm grateful that God forgave me. Be honest with what be honest with yourself. You probably you know if you sit down and think long enough, you ain't really forgave this person. Like I said, because when you hear they dang, facially your attitude change, you just like, oh man, here we go. Or you may see them in a grocery store, and instead of saying, Hey, how you doing? God bless you, and keep it moving, you try to duck, dodge, get behind the aisles and hoping somebody and folks looking at you crazy. Because they see you acting crazy and they don't know why you're acting crazy. And one thing I want to mention before, because we'll be wrapping this up soon. We see a lot of people out there that look like they own drugs, that look like they out of their mind. They be doing all this stuff and, and scratching, picking it. That don't always be drugs. Trust me. I, I know a lot of uh, therapists, uh, psychologists, psychiatrists, behavioral counselors, behavioral specialists. I know a lot of them say a lot of people that come in there are not on drugs. What has happened was these people have not dealt with what they, they, they have not acknowledged their issue. Uh, they, they didn't deal with their issue. They let so much time go by. And guess what? When they finally came to awareness of it, it was too much for them to handle. And it just began to destroy their mind, their mental status. You, everybody is not born with mental illness. You can get mental illness by not dealing with your issues. Here, Minister Johnson, this day, 
You can get mental illness by not dealing with your issues, by being under the illusion that if you let time go by, everything will work itself out. No, it won't. Do yourself a favor and understand. Get you, make the choice to, to become whole in your soul. Because when you don't, based off what I just said, you push yourself that much closer to mental illness. All right? And we, we, we're not trying to... We're not trying to be over spiritualized this thing. Some stuff you again, you can't shout over some stuff. You can't speak in tongues over some stuff. You hook them aside and shout, hear a good sermon and you leave out and still can't deal with yourself. You still can't sit in silence because of all the voices that's in your head. You know what I'm saying? Because you have not dealt with those scars, the, uh, the trauma and everything that's going on in your soul. Your memory of something is only a weight when you have not made peace with those memories. Your memory of something is only a weight as it relates to pain, trauma. Uh, you know, some of these, let me go back up here and and, and just reread. Some of this weight, or as I call it, heavy soul baggage, just for the people that tuned in late. Uh, and if you're watching, please share this to your page, because even if you can't use it, somebody else can. Some of these weights or heavy soul baggage, I, I said was, uh, again, grief, pain, trauma, Habits, addictions, could be unforgiveness, low self-esteem, unhealthy codependency, existential debt, guilt, jealousy, envy, anger, rage. Those are some of the weights. All right, so now let's bounce back down. Your memory of something is only a weight when you have not made peace with those memories. As Joyce Meyer mentioned, you can't wait till you feel like doing something because you may not ever feel like doing it and it may not ever get done. You must make a conscious, deliberate decision despite how you feel. Begin to monitor your attitude and your behavior when certain memories come to you or when you see certain people. I'm going to repeat that one more time. Begin to monitor your attitude and behavior when certain memories comes to you or when you see certain people. Once again, consider the possibility that if you hide, if you run away from, get angry, or move to a bad mental space, then you may not have forgiven or made peace in a situation that you previously thought you did. Okay? Totally acknowledging there's a problem and being 100% honest about its impact and effects are prerequisites. They are prerequisites to being able to formulate a strategy to overcome that weight. Again, Read that one more time. Totally acknowledging there's a problem and being 100% honest about its impact and the effects are prerequ prerequisites <laughs> to being able to formulate a strategy to overcome it. We must stop living in denial. This sounds like cliche stuff, but guess what? Folks still are in a bad place in life because they heard what they call cliche stuff, but they still ain't applied it and and took it to heart and, and dealt with these issues. Stop living in denial. We must stop burying stuff that we have not dealt with. We must stop deceiving ourselves. Continuing to do so will ensure that you will never experience the life God wants you to experience. God already wrote the story and has declared that we win in the end, but all that is predicated upon us. Whether we went, whether we get to that victory or not, it's on us. It's not on God. He didn't already said that this is what the case is. But guess what? He's also given us a will and free choice. We must make the right decisions and choices, connect with the right people, and steer clear of poisonous people. Move and stop at the right time. Rule our soul, our mind, will, and our emotions with diligence. Be honest with ourselves and with other people. Those are just some of the requirements for us to be able to experience and walk into our own promised land that God has formulated for us before the foundation of the world. Now, as we're finishing up 2016, getting ready for to phase into 2017, it's very important that you finish strong and tie up any loose ends. Uh, correct what needs to be corrected. Understand God doesn't leave us out to dry. He's given us the Holy Ghost uh, which helps us to self-evaluate, to examine ourselves, to probe, to discover, to uproot. You must include the Holy Ghost in all of your efforts or else they won't last or the effects will be minimal. And I leave you all with this scripture. Psalm 139, 23 through 24 Amplified Version says, Search me thoroughly, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. 
and see if there's any wicked or hurtful way in me and lead me into the everlasting way. You need to invite God in to help you find out what's going on. He don't just leave you out to dry. He don't say, hey, Tyrone, go ahead and find out uh, what's going on in your soul. What, what weight you've been carrying? And let me go back because I, I need to mention these weights again for anyone that may have uh, these questions. Not the weights, I'm sorry. The questions that's going to help you evaluate your current soul status. For anyone that may have logged on late. Give me one moment. Because these are weights. Like I said, whenever you ask yourself questions, when questions are asked, it causes you to think, ponder upon, and it causes you to evaluate. All right. So again, I want you all to begin to evaluate your soul status. Don't think stuff is going to disappear just because a new year come in and stop the resolutions. Stop that today. Let that not be a part of you anymore. If you know something needs to be changed or if you recognize a problem, an issue, begin taking the steps to deal with that now. Stop saying you're going to wait till uh, January 1st, 2017 and this is going to happen because it's never going to get done and you're going to be in the same place uh, in December uh, 18, 2017, as you are now, if you don't deal with your issues, it's fact. So again, I want you to ask yourself these questions. If you want to write them down, you can come back and listen to the video. That's fine. Am I carrying weight? And what these weights are, I've already mentioned. So we're not going to go over that again. What these weights are, are going to be unique to an individual. Certain things can be common, but it's specific, but it's specifics are going to be unique to an individual. So you need to ask yourself, am I carrying weight? What weight am I carrying? How is this weight evident in my life? Meaning what visible attitudes, behaviors, and results of this weight have you taken notice of or that others have brought to your attention? Because oftentimes we can't, we know something is thinking, <laughs> but other folks, but we just ain't identified it, but other folks can sometimes see it. And sometimes we don't see ourselves thinking. It's almost like, Spoiled cottage cheese is sitting somewhere in the container, but you can't find it. And it's like everybody else is like, man, you don't smell that. And the reason why we don't smell it a lot of times is because we fell in love with our issues and our heavy soul baggage. So now we're not looking for that cottage cheese because it's become, uh, what is that um, scientific term? Biology. Uh, we're, we're, sensory adaptation. That's what it is. So sometimes when you went something long enough and you ain't dealt with it and you try to keep it putting under layers and stuff, it don't even stink to you no more. But everybody else can smell it. Next question is, how long have I carried this weight? Number five is exactly why am I continuing to choose to carry this weight? Slash, what's stopping me from choosing to move towards the path of healing and wholeness rather than choosing to stay weighed down? Number six, do I really want to be healed and whole? Be honest with yourself. Uh, if you like being weighed down in pain because of the attention it brings, then say that. If you're tired of allowing this weight to stagnate you, to make you barren, to destroy your relationships, then say that. Truth is, nobody can help you break free if at heart you don't really want freedom uh, yourself. And if you really want freedom and you want to be healed and whole, then you will have to you have to make the choice because everything is a choice. You can't wait till you feel like doing anything. You have to make a deliberate choice to do all that is necessary to move towards that healing and freedom. But sad enough, some people won't get their healing and freedom and wholeness. Why? Because they've let so much time they've let so much time elapse. And they put so many layers and so many different factors have mixed in. So now to break free, it's going to require a lot more tears, a lot more pain, a lot more fortitude, a lot more strength and things and effort that they're not willing to put up. They just say, I'd rather just stay in this position. But I don't know about you, but I don't want to just stay in my condition. though. So I try to probe myself and ask myself questions daily. And like I said, this is not something you can do one time. Begin to do this thing regularly and take a different approach. Even as you go to church, let the word hit the soul part of you. Stop letting it try to search the sin part because sometimes you ain't doing nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's just weight. And guess what? When you don't deal with weight, I will say this. It can and will turn into sin. All right? Father, we just thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercy. Lord, we thank you for this is the day that you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. 
Father, we just thank you for life, health, and strength, the activities of our limbs, and the voice to speak of your goodness. If it had not been for you who was on our side, we literally know, God, where exactly we will be. Some of us will be dead. Some of us will be uh, in, in, uh, in mental wards, Father. Some of us will be out on the streets, Father. Some of us will be exactly on the drug addicts that we see out there, folks with issues that they haven't dealt with. Father, we know exactly where we will be, but we thank you that your grace and your mercy is yet keeping us, Father. But Father, I ask right now that you go into the spirits of denial that's hidden within people, Father. Begin to open themselves, open them up, help them to open themselves up, I should say, Father. And let your word, let encouragement, let, let peace, everything that's good to begin to take the place of where that pain and that trauma is, Lord. Father, you, you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross. Not just for our sins, but for our weights, that grief, that trauma, that guilt. Father, everything that seeks to weigh us down, that's why your word tells us to strip off every unnecessary weight and the sin which so cleverly entangles us. So, Father, I speak that your people will not walk in denial any longer, Father, that they will not begin to overlook issues. But, Father, that they will acknowledge that there is a problem, Father, find out what that problem is and then seek your face for a strategy, Father, to deal with whatever it is that they're dealing with. Father, I speak today, right now, Father, that if anyone has made any resolutions, that they will throw them away, Father, that whatever they know needs to be changed, Father, whatever, whatever change they need, Father, whatever healing they need, whatever they need to overcome, Father, that that they will start making the choices and decisions to start now, Father, and not wait till January 1st, 2017. Father, how we finish, Father, is how we're going to start. So, Lord, we ask right now that my brothers and sisters finish strong, Father, that they will begin to probe and evaluate and examine their mind, their will, and their emotion, Father. Whatever weight, whatever pain, whatever trauma, unforgiveness, Father, whatever it is that they're carrying that they should not be carrying. Father, I ask that you highlight that stuff, Father. Father, help them to stop putting this stuff under more layers of stuff, but help them to deal with it. Father, I speak that they're going to begin to walk free, Father, and that they're going to experience a whole sense of new sense of freedom, Father, once they come to the conclusion of what's really going on, Father, and let them know that you'll never leave them nor forsake them. So, Father, even when they open themselves up to you, Father, and you expose all the stuff that's weighing them down, Father, let them know you don't leave them out to dry, but you're right there to help them deal with that stuff, Father. That's why you've given us the Holy Ghost. So, Father, we ask that help us to stop doing things in our own power, Father, because when we do things in our own power, Father, they, they become limited, Father. They have, they're of none effect, but Father, when we go in the power of the Holy Ghost, we can do things and make choices and we can overcome, Father, and those things can be lasting effects, Father. Nothing temporal. You're a God of permanent. So, Father, help us to be your people that seeks after permanent healing and uprooting. Father, I speak that my brothers and sisters shall no longer, Father, try to treat the symptoms, but, Lord, that they're going to do what they need to do to cure that condition at its root, Lord. And not only to uproot some stuff, but to destroy that root so it doesn't take root somewhere else. Lord, I just thank you right now that you're giving your people their peace back, their sanity back, Father. Because now they're going to open themselves up and understand that, Father, it may not be sin. Perhaps I got some issues that I ain't dealt with from when I was five years old or 12 years old or something that the teacher said to me or something my grandmother or their uncle may have said. Father, help them to begin to make these connections, Father. And Lord... And take away the fear right now. You have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. If they need to go to a therapist, let them know that they're not any less saved or sanctified or filled with the Holy Ghost just because they go to a therapist, a counselor, a psychologist, or a psychiatrist, Father. Let them do what they need to do to move themselves towards full freedom, healing, and wholeness, Lord. And we come against any religious behaviors and attitudes, Father, that's keeping your people bound, that's stopping them from discovering, God, what it is that's at the heart, Father. Even the statement, I'm blessed and highly favored, Father, when your people are really dealing with some stuff, Father, help them to make the connections, Lord. Help them to stop speaking positive affirmations and ignoring the facts of what's going on in their life. Only when they acknowledge that something is the case, Lord, can the truth of your word come in and trump those facts. So, Lord, we just thank you right now that people will begin to get sweet sleep again. Their sleep will not be robbed from them, Father. That they will be able to concentrate and focus at work, God, and not feel weighed down and not feel pressure, Father, and, and not fall prey to depression and oppression, Lord. 
In the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you right now for your goodness and your kindness. Lord, we understand that we must, must be active participants in our own deliverance, our own healing, in our own wholeness, in our own freedom, Lord. So, Father, help us to know it's not all on you. Father, you've already written the story, but whether we get to the end or not is based on us, Father, and our choices and our decisions. You said to acknowledge you in all of our ways, and you will direct our paths. But you first says to trust in you, Father, as the loving God, and lean not to our own understanding. Father, we know the word tells us that the way, every man's way seems right to him, but the end is death. Father, I speak a life, Father, to my brothers and sisters. I speak a life to myself. Father, that we will not lean to our own understanding, but we will let you order our steps, Father, and direct our paths. So, Lord, I speak that this is a day of new beginning for everyone, Father, that they will begin to do what it takes to break free, Father, and not just to speak freedom, but to live in freedom, Lord. And we thank you and we praise you. And, Father, even people that's going to church, Father, help them to open themselves up so that the word that comes forth, Lord, can go in, Father, and do the work that it needs to do, Father, ripping up layers, uprooting God, cleaning out and clearing out, Father. I thank you right now, Father, that your people are going to finish this year strong, Father, and you're going to send them to an upward motion, Father. No more stagnancy, God. Because we find out, we're going to find out and take the time to find out what it is that's been hindering us, God. And we're going to deal with that, Father, so we can end this year on a good note, Father. And we're going to expect nothing but goodness from you, Father, in the next upcoming year. And I speak right now that when you deliver these people, that they will not be again entangled with the yoke of bondage. They're not going to get back into what you pull them out of, Father. And we thank you and we praise you. And we give your name the glory, the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, y'all. We out. Uh, you can come back and watch this video. Please share it to your page. Because, again, even if you can't use the information, somebody else can. All right? So, again, just take that different thought process. Maybe it's not seeing that's going on in your life. Maybe you're weighed down. Maybe it's your, your emotions are scattered. Uh, and that will even help you look at that scripture again in a different way. What is a profit a man to gain the world but be scattered in his emotions? Uh, to have his will disconnected from God's will uh, or, or to have a be in a bad mental space. All right. All right, y'all. So I've, I've been doing this for the last couple months. So the, the videos are public on my page. You can go back and look at all of these videos. Feel free to share them. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm trying to decide now if we're going to do this next week or not. Uh, so I'll let I'll I'll make the uh, post. Um, you know, and let people know if we're going to have the Sunday morning glory or the Monday night live next week or not. Cause sometimes God may say, you know what? Uh, I've put out enough information. Now I want folks to go and apply this. Cause sometimes don't be that person that gets so full on, on, on information and, and the word and knowledge that you don't begin to walk this stuff out because the ultimate thing is to put into, to apply, to, uh, apply the word and what you're learning to your life. Because if you're just getting full, it's almost like you're becoming spiritually obese because you're not walking this stuff out, all right? Everyone have a blessed day. Once again, share this to your pages. Until we meet again, have a blessed day, y'all. Uh, hopefully the weather holds up. Be safe out there driving, all right? Talk to you later.